Hello and welcome to another PH video blog. Today I am at Valle Lunga Circuit just outside Rome and I'm here to drive the McLaren 720S which you can hear revving in the background there. Sounds pretty good doesn't it? This is a very very important car for McLaren. It's the first time they've replaced one of their cars. So this is the replacement for the 12C and the 650S that became. It's the second super series car. It's at the core of the McLaren range. So it's a really, really crucial machine. It goes up against the Ferrari 488 GTB, Lamborghini Huracan and things like that. But as we know, the horsepower figure, 720 horsepower, rather pushes the boundaries of that particular sector because of course the Ferrari has 670, the Lamborghini 610. 720 is a big, big leap forward and it's supported by a whole load of new technology. But the first thing we probably need to talk about is the way it looks. Now, I happen to quite like it. I think it's quite a challenging looking car. I think that's quite a provocative thing to do by McLaren. They've obviously decided that they're not going to play it safe. They're going to do things differently. They've made it look distinct from the sports series, the 570 GT and S. The most talked about feature I think probably is this eye socket intake. Now that has a functional benefit as well. It draws air into the radiators and out down the side of the car, but it also gives it a very distinctive look. Is it pretty? I'm not sure that this whole car is one that immediately grabs you as kind of four, like perhaps a Ferrari or a Lamborghini, but the more you look at it, the more you understand about it, the more interesting it becomes. So that eye socket bleeds air through here, out through here, along the side of the car, you get these little side planes here, which then clean up the airflow down the side of the car. You'll see that it doesn't have the distinctive side vents that we had on the 12C and 650. The air instead goes in here, which gives it a clean profile with some sculpting on the bodywork. The bodywork is now aluminium, not carbon fiber like the 12C or 650S. That's quite an interesting move. Getting around to the back, we have a big movable rear wing here, and perhaps the influence of the 675 LT in these exhausts here. Obviously loads of aero. I quite like the fact that you can see the gearbox and things through the rear diffuser. I like that one too because it's like the 288 GTO, you know, you can see the gearbox hanging out the back of it. I think that's really cool. But as I say, the more you look around it, the more kind of interesting angles and things you begin to see. Now, if we get in familiar McLaren butterfly doors, that was apparently inspired by the F1. They wanted to make it look like an F1 from the front with the doors open. Now you'll see that the interior is really quite airy and open. That's a very McLaren thing. So we've got that trademark very low front scuttle. We've got these really narrow A-pillars with the exposed carbon of the Monocell 2 structure. That's really cool. I like that. You can see the carbon fibre this car is made from they don't try and hide that. Um, it's an evolution in interior styling as well. I think it perhaps is it as fancy as uh, some of the other products in the market. It's functional, it's interesting, there are some cool features which people are going to enjoy. So if I fire it up you'll see familiar McLaren display here. If I go into the track mode it folds into that track display which just has your revs and your speed and the gear. If you go back into the regular mode it comes out and becomes a regular speedo again with all your normal displays and that, I think that's a really neat little feature. You know it's a kind of surprise and delight feature which I think supercars should have. They should have things like that that make you go, oh, that's cool, isn't it? Make, you know, impress your passengers. Let's face it, you want to be able to impress your passengers in a car like this. Now, so far I've driven the car here through central Rome and on some fairly crummy Italian roads. And like the 12C and 650S, it's really impressed with how comfortable it is. It's got the second generation of the proactive chassis control, which decouples anti-roll, which means that it can just glide over the surface. It's not quite like a limo. There's still a little bit of shudder through it. This is a a very fast supercar, it needs some, some degree of body control, but it's very impressive, very refined, probably more refined even, or equally refined to the 570 GT that I'm running at the moment as a long-termer. So it's impressive on the road. It has great steering feel, all these things that we like from McLaren. So it kind of, it gives you a sense of what's going on, even at fairly low speeds, which is really nice. It's a really satisfying feeling to be, of course, you know, this car can go ridiculously fast, but if you can't enjoy a sense of the setup and handling and things like that at more realistic speeds, what's the point? It just becomes 
stupid bragging rights, doesn't it? But McLaren have always done that very well. I enjoyed that in the LT, that you could drive that car at fairly sedate speeds and still get a sense of what the car was up to. Really enjoyed that. So on the road, it really impresses. Now we're here at the racetrack and we're finally going to be able to get a sense of what 720 horsepower and 568 pound-feet of torque are really like. I've had a small sense of it on the road and it is pretty damned exciting, I've got to say. It's, it does raise the bar in this sector, I think. It leaves the 488 GTB and the Huracan looking, I think, a little bit tardy. Um, we'll have to see how that plays out on the track, see if that really comes to the fore. Of course, it's got things like Active Aero and things like that as well, a whole load of new stability control systems, driver aids, things like that, to help you make sense of all that power. Will we be able to? I don't know. This Valley Lunga track's got some very scary corners on it, so it'll be very interesting to see. But you've had a talk around the car, you've kind of seen what it's got. Now let's see what it can do. Right, so I've got three laps to try and get a sense of what this 720 horsepower McLaren Super Series is like to drive. Now, I'm not going to blind you with stats. There are a lot of them, but I'll share just one with you. And that is the zero to 200 kilometers an hour time, or zero to 125 miles an hour for all you Brexiteers out there. This car will do it in 7.8 seconds, which is a tenth quicker than a 675 LT. That is an indication of where McLaren is pitching this car and quite how rapid this is. It's also half a second quicker than a Ferrari 488 GTB. Half a second faster from zero to 200 kilometers an hour. That is a massive margin in this game and far more relevant than zero to 60 and all those other measures. It's just, I've got to try and convey quite how rapid this car is. It is I was told before I drove it that we would need to recalibrate what we knew of McLaren cars, fast supercars, given how far McLaren has moved performance on with this. And they're not kidding, just look at that. This Valley Lunga track is really quite fierce. This first corner is scary, it's really fast. I can really feel the aero working now. That's of course the big selling point of the Super Series over the 570 Sports Series. That and the active roll control of the proactive chassis control but I don't want to talk about tech I want to talk about how it feels this car is savage there is more of the LT in this car than I expected it feels a lot more raw and angry than than the 650s there's a real aggression to it which I think is really really welcome there is as I say a savagery to this car which you just don't get in a 650s it's a much more aggressive car i'm quite interested at how mclaren has dialed that into this new super series a second generation car steering feel like all other mclarens is absolutely exemplary it's lovely weight and feedback to it the controls are all i think the best in the business i think the steering feel is way better than the kind of light darty thing you get from Ferraris is a million times better than what Lamborghini offer with their variable rack. Everything about this car, the way the engine picks up, it still has that boostiness that you get from other McLaren, so it definitely feels turbocharged. It doesn't have any sense of being naturally aspirated, but I think that's good because it's just the power delivery is relentless and absolutely thrilling. So you get both that pickup of a turbo engine and that kind of whoosh but then it also loves revs. It really, really loves revs. So it really encourages you to ring it out to the red line. Just look at that, seven and a half, eight, 225 kilometers an hour still. That is so, so fast. But stability under braking from the Active Aero is absolutely exemplary as well. It's really, really good. A couple of other features I want to talk about. This car's got variable drift control, which is a new thing for McLaren. It suggests a sense of fun. 
it's more of a kind of traction control, so it won't spare your blushes if you can't do the corrective input. So if you get on the throttle early and then you see there, it will manage the slip, and you can vary that by a, a little slider on the touch screen there, and it it just demonstrates that McLaren wants to get a feeling of interactivity into the driving. It's not just a kind of cold-hearted F1 appliance. It's a supercar, it's fun to drive, and the thing is, it's really comfortable and quiet on the road as well. It'll drive like this, as hardcore as any McLaren has ever driven. And on the road, it'll waft. It's a luxurious supercar with a nice interior, all the toys you could hope for. And there we go, that's my three laps done. I hope I managed to get a sense of quite how mad and extreme this McLaren is in this track environment but can also operate as a sensible daily car. This really, really does move the game on and for just over 200 grand, that level of performance, we're not far off, we're not far off the hypercars really, are we? You know, it's just insane. It, this, McLaren has really pushed the game on with this car in every respect, the technology, the speed, the driver support. I am pretty blown away, as I think you can probably tell.